Hello and welcome everyone. This is Lavender Sky Panther. Today is Thursday, September 17th, 2020. And the topic for today is Sky with a View. It's a collection of images and sky observations happening September 2nd through the 5th, 2020. And hopefully by the next show I'll be able to be all caught up and we'll stay current with each week. I like to do that as I document these things. So I hope you enjoy what I've got for today. And before we get into the sky observations, I'd like to say good day, Osio, Pao, Buongiorno, Guten Tag, Kia Ora, Jambo, Buenos Dias, Bonjour, Ni Hao, Cien Dobre, Konnichiwa, Dobro Venia, Anyo Aseo, Boa Tarji, Dobri Den, Aloha Winala, Galimera, and Hudendach. And I had to include this photo. These were not homemade this time but they were really good. So I hope you're enjoying something today that makes you happy. <laughs> these, these are terrible probably for you health-wise, but they were delicious. All right, so the first sky observation is just kind of a collection all at once at a glance of some activity that was happening in the western sky um, uh, towards sunset as I was outside doing some yard work. And so I could really observe this um, as it progressed. This is only a fraction of the photos that I had on the sequence but I wanted to just include something. So it's actually more telling to the naked eye and the direct observation than what's popping up in these photos. But nonetheless, I can tell you that I saw two, actually two objects in addition to what is supposed to be the sun. I used the sun in quotes because as you can see, everything is pale white and pretty glaring. That's not what our usual sun is like. Um, and if you want to know more about my, uh, my thoughts on that, do see some of my previous shows, so I do fully believe there is some type of artificial tech up in there, up in the sky, that is impacting the sun uh, to make it look artificial. So it might be a solar simulator, or some other lens work happening up there uh, to change the effect of our sun. Anyway, do have a look at some of my other shows uh, if, you, if you have a moment, and also look around at other sky and earth watching channels to get their opinions and views and their observations coming in from around the world to form your own opinion about what's going on. And in any case, definitely be outside observing the sky two to five minutes a day. Just look around you 360 degrees and uh, see what's going on if you're not doing it already. All right, so anyway, all that to say is, you know, we have the, the typical clouds rolling in to obscure our view of sunrises and sunsets these days. This was no exception on this particular day. But there was the main light source and there was also a clear sphere here and also here. Uh, to the direct eye, so it didn't come out as clearly in the photos, but you can see that there's a there's a sphere here um, overlaying on this, and there was a ball here. So anyway, I was just capturing what I could, but as always, we have this cloud interference. Okay, this is the sunset sequence happening on September 2nd. Um, the time stamps are all here. I'm going to go through just pretty quickly on some of these because I would like to keep today's show really short. Last one ran a little bit long, so I don't want to repeat that for today. <laughs> and also I want to get caught up. So anyhow, um, just noting some oddities, you know, you see some weird shapes happening with some of these quote unquote clouds. I do believe most, uh, a lot of them are artificial these days as well. If you look at some of my other shows, I do talk about that at length. Um, we've got some pink sky beams emerging with a void of a beam. And then we've got some pinkish color, pale yellow, just different things. You know, look at this oddity in the lower right hand corner. Just three kind of, um, I don't even know what to call these, elongated, um, you know, artificial cloud, you know, in, in, a, in a row here. So I'm not sure what's causing that, but I can tell you that's nothing on nature usually happening that way. And uh, at least from being here decades on this planet. And these are all at an angle too, which is also very, very odd. Okay, so we're just going to zoom in on some of those um, photos in the uh, sunset sequence, look at some a little more individually, and we're also going to run some enhancements on them. And when I say enhanced photo or enhancements, it just means that I've altered some of the attributes of the photo, such as uh, contrast, brightness, hue, you know, things of that nature. Nothing, it doesn't mean anything's been added or taken away. Um, so anyway, here we go. Upper left-hand corner is the original photo of that weird chevron or... Uh, inverted V-shaped cloud with something happening in here. So I thought, let's just take a look, run some enhancements, see if anything is really going on. And there's some interesting things starting to emerge, but nothing too concrete. But where I have A labeled, that was the most clear thing I could pick out. Where this really is like a, what we've got one, two, three, four, like a quadrilateral um, shape. And uh, 
you know, with a very clear edge here. So I tried to, you know, bring it out even better. That's about as good as I could get. So when we, we have A and then we go to A.1, that just means I either zoomed in further and enhanced further, or I simply just outlined for clarity the shape. So here we go, this trapezoid here is what the word I was looking for before. Um, but here we go, I, I see that clear shape there. What it is, I don't know. So I'm just calling it cloaking object in sky uh, because it does have symmetry and it's very geometrical and that does not occur typically in the sky unless it's a sphere, a round object, or elliptical, but maybe, depending on what it is. Anyhow, um, this one is called Red Pink Beams at Sunset. So again, that's the, the photo I briefly passed over in the sunset sequence. But you can see the original photo is up to the left, and I just tried to enhance it a little bit more to pull out some of the warmer hues, as you can see on each side. Now this one is red, pink above, pale yellow below at sunset. Again, the upper left shows the original. You can really see that glow, of that like pale golden glow of yellow down below. But then you can also detect you know, some real pinks happening above. You could do all of this to the naked eye, but down below here, I've just kind of enhanced it to push the colors a little bit more so it's more readily apparent in case you're not picking them up here in the upper left. And um, I just have A and B because we're going to look at, uh, oh, sorry, in this case, it's just A is denoting the red and B is denoting the more yellow tone. All right, here's another sunset sequence. And this one, again, I'll, I'll defer for, for you guys to look at your own time you know, the exact timings and what type, types of changes are happening. But this one was just very interesting. This is again at sunset, not sunrise, and we've got a pale pink beam shooting up in the east at the horizon. And it's emanating from the horizon point, planning outward. So there's something happening at the horizon, or like I like to say, just offshore from our planet to create this. At the east side, not the west, at sunset, so that's very odd. So be paying attention to that wherever you are around the world. Um, see if you're noticing that phenomenon as well. So here we're just looking at the south. We're noticing some warmer colors or some type of maybe object back there. And then turning reds and pinks, again, these beams, and uh, just as we progress along. Okay, so I've taken one of those photos in the sequence, and I'm calling this one Sky Geometry Openings Question Mark at Sunset. Because if you look at this band over here, you start to see some structure as far as like regular openings that seem to be similar in shape, again, kind of trapezoidal in shape. So I did run some enhancements. The original photo is up here in the upper right. Uh, this has already been enhanced where the letter A is. A.1 is another zoom in and altering some things just to see if we could pull out anything better. And on this one, it didn't happen that way too much. <laughs> but I'll leave you to look at this a little bit on your own. Maybe you see some things in there. All right, now this is just chem chemtrail plus sky geometry. This is looking east in the afternoon, and uh, this is a clear chemtrail. I saw it when it was first made in another part of the city, and then like an hour later or more, it's still hanging around and fanning out as we know these things to do, and um, definitely not a contrail because that would have dissipated within a few minutes, and again, this was an hour later. Then in looking here, we also see a diamond shape, so A is just denoting the chemtrail, B, the sky geometry here. So A1, we'll go there. That's just uh, changing the contrast around a little just so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And then B1 is just focusing in on this object to see if we could see anything a little bit better. And in this case, not too much, but sometimes it helps to take out the color or you know change the color in different ways just optically for us to look at things in a different perspective. And here at least you can see what I always call tufted cloud. To me, that's the telltale sign of an object cloaking or arriving or departing, um, you know, around the edges. And especially it gets a little more concentrated at one corner or a couple corners more than another, I've noticed. Uh, so that's that. Okay, this is sky geometry plus wisps. This one is just a little strange because we've got a lot of things going on. So I've got these things I'm calling sky wisps. Other people refer to them by other names, and I cover that in other shows as well if you want to have a look there, if you have a moment. Um, so this one, when you look to the left-hand side, hang on, I'm trying to get my cursor over there, you see letter A, you see a very hard edge. And the more you look, you know, you see it's a part of something bigger even down here, so diamond shape. And you see a hint of something over here too. And we're going to look at these with contrast in a moment. And then here, this one is uh, progressing a little bit later, and you still see that diamond shape, and you see a whole host of other things starting to spring up. 
So let's look at it with some little more enhancement. We got A1 is that diamond I was talking about down here. You can see this one now more clearly. And then on the right hand side, here are those two shapes we were just looking at, but then a whole other other <laughs> level of things are going on too above. So you see a more triangular form happening here. Kind of actually a triad triangular form happening overall. And little bits and things with hard edges popping up. So have a look here on your, on your own time. See if you see any other interesting things in there. And if you do, as always, let me know in the comment section below if you like. Okay, this is called Red Pink Wisps Geometries at Sunset. I have labeled A, B, and C. These are all looking east again at sunset, which is very curious because we're getting a flash of red pink color all the way over on the other um, side, if you will, at the other horizon when it was not being caused from any effects happening direct to the west. But anyway, I noticed little things happening here at A, B, there's another little form, looks like it may be part of the same one. And C, just another kind of form happening, like a, an oblique or elongated triangle, an angle happening there. And this little thing is curious, this little wisp of a thing, you know, popping up as well. So we're going to look at it with enhancements just to see again. That looks a little more spherical, whatever that is. This looks like something with structure to it, maybe a diamond, maybe a square, you know, with some texture happening in there. And this again pulls out, we can definitely see our, like, a, you know, again, elongated triangle. Or if you look at this whole thing, you know, just whatever kind of shape that that is, it looks like almost like a shell. Um, anyway, have a look and see what you think is going on in there. I just thought they were interesting as forms, and uh, the way they were um, appearing in the sky was also very, very interesting. All right, this is called interdimensional or cloaking craft, question mark. So we have, let's see, hang on one second. This was happening... Sorry about the little time conflict. This was happening at 4.48, not 7.05. But anyway, you can see interesting trail of stuff happening here, wispy-like. And then I noticed this very distinct shape. So that's where we have letter A. We're going to zoom in a little bit more with um, some enhancement on A.1. And you can definitely see a shape. You can see something that looks like cast it's casting shadow. So whether this is just one little bit and this is kind of like it's camouflage or if this whole thing is one big assembly, um, that's going to be up to you on this one. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not really sure what exactly what's happening. But then we go to A2 to get a little better idea. And again, you just see some little hard edges and bits. So still hard to say, is this, you know, all one thing or even part of something bigger that we can't see? Or are these really the points of interest? Um, again, I'll leave that up to you to see what you think on this one. All right, interdimensional cloaking craft question mark. We've got letters A and B, so we've got these striations, these very regular waves happening. I've been noticing these a lot wherever there's cloaking craft or craft attempting to cloak. Uh, again, we've got this big puff of, of, of like a tufted cloud puff. And then we've got this strange dark cloud. Looks very artificial the way it's frayed out. Could be something cloaking in there as well. We've got a little bit of a geometry popping up, and we've got this strange little tufted activity happening in here. So I zoomed in, B1, you can see this little area. And this almost looks like, um, it's like a rim of something, you know, like a conical form, a truncated conical form, maybe a little triangular shaped here. So to me, that's some kind of structure, you know, that's nothing naturally deforming in clouds. And then A1, I was just trying to get at if you could see any other edges or features popping out of here. Couldn't really get to too much more, but I thought it was worth it just to at least uh, post it there. Maybe you can find something in there when you look at it. All right, active sky with potential craft. This one, there was so much going on with the sky. So not only these strange type of cloud formations, but also this actual form here with even an outline. It comes with its own little outline. So to me, this is very likely cloaking craft. I couldn't get my hands on any, you know, real tangible physical, like, you know, structures popping out like I have on other shows, um, but still worth uh, showing you. And I just suspect things are hiding in there. Also, these might be other types of um, craft cloaking in here with different types of cloaking material. Off in the distance, we have the, again, wedge, not wedge. Um, others refer to this as a wedge cloud or fan-shaped cloud. Um, I've called these a puddle cloud because it just wells up, uh, like in a conical form comes out, and then this whole rim starts to fan out and puddle out like pouring water on pavement. The way it just spills out. Um, this might be little bits of craft back in here as well. And this is this heavy blanket of gray cloud that crops up right and right on time for sunset. Uh, again, sorry about the little timestamp difference. 
Um, it is 7.15 on this one. I just forgot to delete these on some of the, the slide titles. All right, now this is uh, Active Sky with Potential Craft 2. So again, this is happening at 7.17, not 7.05. And I have A and B listed here. So the original photo is in the upper right. It's a weird little curious thing going on. We've got, first of all, these really strange clouds, clouds in quotes, because these look artificial and maybe even cloaking material type. Uh, we've got all different kinds of clouds activity happening at one time. We have this little thing coming up, look like a little snake head. We have a little bit here that shows that maybe that's cloak and craft. And then we have some interesting things going on here down below. So when you look at an enhancement of that photo down here, that's a that little like snake head I was talking about, or worm. <laughs> um, but I thought that would be the very telling features. I zoomed in there, I couldn't pick up much other than like something happening here on this rim. But what it started to become really interesting was down in here. So A, you know, I'm kind of capturing whatever that is, and B here, it looks like definite structure, like two tubes laying down here. So we go up to the upper left-hand corner and try to get at what is this thing. It's still kind of hard to tell, but it still shows like it's like an actual structure to me. And um, down here too, this looks like two, these, these two little humps look like parts of long tubes, the, the ends of them. So not exactly sure what's going on, but it is interesting. I wanted to capture it and share it with you. All right, now this is called Cloak and Craft with window openings. And um, yeah, just looking off into the sky, this looked like regular openings, you know, of some type. And I've heard of other people on other uh, sky watching channels finding some of these things. I've never seen this before ever. This is the first time in our area that I've at least noticed it perhaps in the last two years of really diligently looking. And so look at their, their openings with equal spacing with equal uh, like mullions in between. Uh, so to me, that's that's undeniably some type of structure. I don't even think with any kind of, you know, wave activity, we talk about harp creating things, but that would be more waves like this happening, these striations, nothing like this. So to me, this is absolutely a cloaking craft. Um, I'll show you some enhancements and a little outlined uh, sketch overlays too to show you what I'm seeing if it's hard for you to follow with a cursor. Uh, I know some people see it better, you know, with some sketch overlays, so we'll get to it. But in the meantime, if you can see what I'm seeing with these openings, to me this would be like observation deck or control deck or bridge. And then this almost, to me, looks like it would have a catamaran shape because we've got a definite point here and a point here. It looks symmetrical to me. So this looks like the front, you know, would be like um, have these little extended arms toward the front. And um, to me this would almost be like pontoon-like, like these things happening on the side you know, just from what I can best tell. So let's look at it with some enhancements. You know, again, you see that structure of these quote unquote openings. And to me, again, you got some structure pulling down here. And this would be like, you know, open, you know, with uh, two extended arms, if you will. There's some structure happening back in here, popping up. So uh, we're looking at A2, just again, to try to see if we can see it in a different way. And then A3, is where I've taken it and done some very crude, mind you, sketch overlays, but just to maybe help you see some of the structure a little bit better. Okay, this is just called Strange Cloud Forms. And on the left, this thing looks like it's diving down. And again, we've got a, a host, a variety of different cloud forms happening here. We've got kind of like these staccato, blurry out forms. We've got little wisp-like activity. We've got these undulating, you know, bars happening along here. And then we have, um, you know, these little gray bits. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. This might be something cloaking or interdimensional object, hard to say. Then over to the right, you know, just this is kind of inexplicable for this climate. Uh, we're in subtropical, hot, humid climate. And for, you know, months on end, very little wind per month. It uh, used to be windy all the time uh, where I am. And now you can almost count the days on your hand in one month where you get any breeze. So that's a notable change for the area. So that being said, you know, this is kind of behavior, this roundish smooth thing with like wisps happening off of it. That's more characteristic of higher altitude or cold air. Uh, yet we're having it in subtropical Florida. So that's just something, um, you know, an oddity now starting to pop up a little bit more. So to me, there's got to be some type of something cloaking back in there. All right, this is called clam shaped cloaking craft with a question mark. You know, I think you can see why I'm calling it clamshape. At least I hope you can. We've got this ellipse with these kind of ridges, these undulating striations or bars and beams kind of popping up through there. Very odd, you know, assembly for a cloud. Um, also these undulating edges. 
this has a pretty sharp edge as well. So I just picked uh, one little part of this to zoom in and see if I could find any more notable features on it. So that's where I have A, and you can really see some of these hard edges happening in here with a strange puff of, um, you know, odd cloud because it's, it's dark, it's not smoke from anywhere, it's just its own thing. And so to me that's something trying to veil and cloak whatever's happening beyond here. So A2 over here, I just zoomed in a little bit more, and to me it definitely looks like something cloaking in there. And again, we've got these um, these striations, these undulations, which show me disturbance and wave activity in the atmosphere. Uh, so I'm going to go with that's a cloaking craft, but see what you think. And there are also other little things happening in this photo. Uh, if you take some time and look on your own, you might find some more interesting things. All right, this is called interdimensional objects, question mark. So this is, again, another scene and um, where we've got really strange collection of clouds, you know, in quotes, because a lot of it looks artificial. We've got this blur out effect that's not the camera. I've talked about that in other shows, the smudge-like effect happening, um, which has to be some type of interdimensional, I would think, uh, activity. And then we've got this weird um, explosion of cloud and smearing of cloud. I, I don't even know what to call that. And here too, very artificial looking stuff happening. So we're just going to look in this little area for now. We go to A1, you know, we just see like, uh, looks like cloaking material to me, <coughs> excuse me, in front of something. I don't know what might be flying in down here. And then this started to look really interesting, has structure to it. So I just focused on these two points for now. Um, couldn't really pull much more out of that one. So I went into this one for B2. You can definitely see something, can't tell you what that is, but uh, to me that must be something interdimensional craft or maybe even like a 3D craft with a very interesting cloak on it, I don't know. Maybe cloaking in ways we don't yet understand. All right, this is another cloaking craft question mark because looking off to the Northwest, this was also again this really weird smear out activity of cloud and a little like staccato cloud smudged out. Just all very strange. Um, again, living here decades on this planet, I've never seen anything like this in the sky. And then this had its own little like bright outline as it's abutting this other form. So it very well could be two cloaking craft docking together, something of the like. Because uh, look again with some enhancement, you know, you see that clear line where it's two different objects. Um, and this is just a, a different view, excuse me again, <coughs> of the overall collection of just very strange cloud and quotes activity, <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll leave that for you to look a little more on your own. Okay, well, thank you for remaining in good spirits here a while, or at least I hope you did during the show. If you're new, again, welcome, and if you are not, welcome back. And whatever the case, uh, we only have a little bit to go to the weekend. I hope everyone's having a beautiful week right now with a beautiful weekend coming up. And I look forward to touching base again with you guys soon with some more observations. And until then, I wish you all the best and tremendous peace. Lavender Sky Panther. Bye.